I hope you're doing super amazing. I really, really miss you, and I'm super bummed I am not going to see you for the rest of the year, so that's something. Um, anyway, <laughs> so the things you're going to do this week is, one, watch this Ed puzzle, which you're doing. Congratulations, you've done the first thing. We are going to be talking about some review of factoring and operations with polynomials because that will lead us into the new things that we're going to be doing in the weeks to come. After this, you're going to do the practice of said factoring and operations with polynomials. And the last thing you want to do is the reflection because you can't reflect if you didn't do anything. So last thing is always a reflection. So let's get down to it. So factoring for... If you do not remember how to do it, this is a quadratic. So we're only learning how to factor quadratics. We're not doing anything else that's more difficult. You could do that if you're in an upper skilled math class in college, whatever. So the general form of the quadratic formula of the, of the quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are just numbers, and it equals zero. If it does not equal zero, you need to set it equal to zero, or else you can't factor. So remember, you have to set it equal to zero. Then, you might have learned factoring the other way if you were in another class, it besides mine, but I like to do something called the x factor. So I draw an x, whatever my c is, so this number that doesn't have a variable attached to it goes on the top, and whatever my b is, so the number that is attached to the x goes on my bottom. I like to think b bottom. And what I like to do is I look for two numbers that multiply to give you the c value and add or subtract to give you the b value. So let's practice. So this first one, I need to look for my a, b, and c. So my a is in front of my x squared, there's nothing there. So it's assumed to be a one. My b is what's next to my x, which is a seven, but I have to use that minus as well as a negative. So my b is negative seven. And then lastly, my c is this 18 right here because it's alone, but again, I have to keep that negative. So it's negative 18. So now I can make my x factor. Where on my top is my C value, which is negative 18. And on my bottom is my B value, which is negative 7. So I also haven't done these yet, so you're going to see me processing my life in real time. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add or subtract to negative 7. So I like to think, what are the factors of 18? I know 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 15, 16, 6, I think that's all. And I like to say, okay, now which one of these can I use? I'm going to say 2 times 9, but I know one of them has to be negative because of this negative 18. Well, this is a negative down here, which means I, the bigger one has to be negative. So let's see, negative 9 plus 2. Oh, perfect. That gives you me my negative 7. Therefore, these are going to be my answers because I am not done yet. I need to actually write this in factored form. And factored form is just a parenthesis. I have x, then I have plus 2. Then I look at this, and I have x minus 9. And that's it. I'm done. This is my factored form. Note, you can write it in the opposite way. You can write x minus 9 and x plus 2. It's the same exact thing. It's correct. So I want you to, tr we're going to talk about this, then I'm going to have you try this one. So what do you notice about this one that's different than this one? Hopefully you said it's not equal to 0. So we need to make it equal to 0. And how we do that is this is a positive one, so I need to subtract one. And whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other. So I'm going to subtract one from this one as well. So my new thing is x squared minus 8x plus 7 
equals zero. So now my A is one, my B is negative eight, and my C is seven. So I can set up my X factor now. So when I set my X factor, what number goes on the top? Seven goes on the top. And what number goes on the bottom? Negative eight goes on my bottom. So I'm looking for what two numbers multiply to seven, but add to negative eight. Did I give one that's... Oh, I figured it out. Sorry. So seven, the only thing is one and seven. Those are the only factors. But how the heck do we get this negative eight? We have to make both of them negative because negative one plus negative seven gives us that negative eight. So then finally, I have x minus one times x minus seven, and that is my factored form. I am done with that one. All right, so I want you to look at this very last one and notice what it's equal to. What should it be equal to? Zero. So we need to subtract 5x. So the reason I want to show this one or something like this is a lot of people, when you rewrite, you'll just write that minus 5x on the end, which is totally normal. We're like, okay, we can just, there's no like terms, we'll just put it there. But notice this general form. The x term is in the middle, so we actually want to write it as x squared minus 5x minus 14 equals 0. The reason we want to do that is because that saves us from like being like, oh my god, where's my a, where's my b, where's my c? Because I can easily see where they are now. So I want you to try this one on your own. Try to factor it. And tell me what you got in factored form. So with those parentheses. So when you did this, you should have gotten um, x minus 7 times x plus 2, right? Yes. So if you wrote this as x plus 2 times x minus 7, still correct. If you're having issues with this still, please email me, text me, Zoom chat me, whatever. You have all my contact info, so please, please, please reach out. The second and last thing we're going to be doing this week is polynomial operations. So remember, polynomials are the things we've been working with. So it's anything that has more than one term. So it can have x squared, x. The only things that aren't polynomial, the number eight. That's not a polynomial. There's only one term. So there has to be multiple terms. So we're going to talk about the things that we know how to do with it. So the first thing we know how to do is we know how to add and subtract. And that's we literally just combine like terms. So when I combine like terms, because I got a lot of time now, I'm going to doodle. So I have this x squared. So I'm going to do like a weird little thing here. All right, I have something with an X. I'm going to do something like that. Oh, look, another X. I'm going to do another one of these. Oh, nope, that's not another X. X to the fourth. Oh, I'm going to make a weird squiggle going down. I got a two. That's something new. I'm going to go like this. And then, oh, my gosh. Sorry. And then I got this 3X squared. Oh, X squared, that's like that. I'm going to do this little thing. So I just doodled, and I can clearly see what I need to combine now. I combine the doodles like this, so I have x squared plus 3x. Remember, if there's not a number in front, we assume it to be a 1. So 1 plus 3 gives me 4, so I have 4x squared. Now I'm combining the little mountains that I drew, so I have 5x minus 3x. 5 minus 3 gives me 2 so I have plus 2x. I have nothing to combine with this one, so I'm just going to rewrite x to the fourth. And I have nothing to combine with that last one, so I'm just going to rewrite 2. So technically, this is correct. But the math grammar is wrong. So this is a really ugly answer. And I don't want my answers to be ugly, so I'm going to make it pretty. And to do that, 
I need to look at the degrees and put them in order from greatest to least. So this x to the 4, 4 is bigger than 2. So I'm going to put x to the 4th. Then I'm going to put plus 4x squared because 2 comes next. Then I have this 2x and this 2. Well, this has an x and this doesn't. So I'm going to put plus 2x and then plus 2. And this is the grammatically correct answer. Technically, this is correct too, but it's ugly and gross and ill. It's not helpful. And if you get good at putting it in order, the next thing we're going to be learning, will this will help a lot. So that's adding and subtracting. Very last thing we're going to do is remember how to multiply polynomials. So the way I taught it was the box method. You might have learned FOIL. If you can do FOIL correctly, do it. If you struggle with FOIL, use the box method because it is a fail-safe way to do it. So the box method. Literally draw a box and then put it in different sections. So I have my x plus 3, so I'm going to put x plus 3 on the top of my box. Then I have 2x minus 1. So I'm going to put 2x minus 1. And notice this minus stays with the 1. Don't write it here or else you'll lose it. So now I literally just multiply like I was finding the area of something. So I have 2x times x. I'm finding the area of that first box. So that's 2x squared. Then I have 2x times positive 3. So that gives me 6x. Then this box down here, I have x times negative 1, which is negative 1x or negative x. And then I have negative times positive 3. So I have a negative 3. Now, I just combine like terms. So I have 2x squared. Then I have these x's here. So I have plus 4 5x, because I did 6x minus 1x, minus 3. And that's my answer there. All right, this next one, you do the same exact way. So you want to set up your box. I'm going to go through this a little fast, because I don't want this video to run any longer. So I have x minus 5. I have 4x minus 2. My first box, x times 4x is 4x squared. 4x times negative 5 is negative 20x. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. And this would be 10. Now you want to combine your like terms. Your answer for this should have been 4x squared minus 22x plus 10. Note, if you did FOIL and you got 4x squared plus 10, stop doing FOIL. The reason I say this is because every time you do FOIL, you're missing your middle term. This is why the box method is fail-proof, because you do not miss that middle term. So those are the types of things you're going to be doing this week. Um, I just want to say I really miss you all. I've already said that, but I really, really do. Um, please reach out. Please let me know if you have any questions. I hope you all are staying safe, staying indoors. Yeah. Well... I won't see you later, but I hope you're having a great day.